whole nother state. I'm trying to eat down a whole nother plate. Seem like my homies were stuck in the hood. I just told them be safe in the state. Welcome to the Black Myths Podcast. Welcome to the Black right. Myths Podcast. I am so happy to be here and that I beat Too Black to the intro. Today's going to be a very interesting episode. I'm going to pass it off to my lovely co-host, Black. Go ahead. Oh, now you're going to pass it to me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you called you lovely. Uh, now lovely you're gonna Black. Pass... Now you're Are you pass feeling the love? It is Valentine's week. Um... <laughs> All right. He's like, it's lovely. All right, so today, kids do these days. There you go. Today Hard. is yeah, throw them up. Um, today, today is um an interesting episode. This is not gonna be your typical myth that we debunk. Um, we are going to engage in a bit of critique of our own channel, including ourselves to some extent. Um, you know, people will respond in different ways. Um, just know. Before this episode is launched, everyone has been informed that it's coming, that we are not here to create any beef or start any feuds. You know, we're not here to give fodder to people who go on the Breakfast Club and diss people on our channel or any of the other channels that have beef with us. We're, this is not for you to use on your broadcast to make a point. If you want to use it, it's not done with our endorsements. This is not about bashing individual shows. Or critiquing individuals um, other than their relationship to the overall structure of what we call BPM. So today we'll be at a critique slash assessment of Black Power Media. Um, this will probably not even make it to our audio feed. Uh, but so we're going to deal with BPM. We've been on BPM longer than most people other than the founders themselves and some of the founding shows. Uh, we joined BPM in what? 2021 in the spring i believe somewhere in that somewhere in there um Sounds and, about right. yeah bpm started in early 2021 we joined like a few months after um we have seen things not shared enough critiques we'll get to some of that later um but i don't open the floor like i always do we still gonna have fun we still gonna do this like we do anything to the rest of the team to share their thoughts on this as we venture into this principled critique. Definitely. Um, the conversation tonight, or the critique rather, is supposed to be a constructive one. Um, this in hopes to push the channel forward because we want to make sure that BPM lives up to its potential. If we want to be the propaganda arm of a Black liberation, then we should hold, our, hold ourselves to certain standards and certain principles. And this is what we want to um this is the point we're trying to get across to everybody watching everybody who's a fan of bpm all our supporters and that's it yeah i mean i think this also aims to serve as an example to folks in other organizations um i think too often in spaces that are centered around liberation or a general cause when people have disconnect or people don't like something or don't agree with it um, multiple things happen, folks just don't speak up and then they dip um, or they speak up and they allow egos to get in the way of the bottom line and the actual cause that folks are trying to serve. Um, and in reality, like that stuff has to be checked at the door. Folks yeah. should be able to feel um, safe enough to address things that need to be addressed as long as they're coming from a space of, you know, having a growth mindset of like, this is to move things forward not as an attempt to just point fingers and also we're all here trying to get free collectively and so if we cannot do things in a manner that is organized i think so often we see all the things that are happening on the opposition and we're like these niggas were just out organized than the rest of us yeah. um, and that is how they are able to continue to oppress us and in order for us to be able to continue to fight back we need to match that level of organization on every front. So, yeah, we'll talk about yeah. all the ways in which we dropped the ball that led to us collectively getting to this point, um, but also recognizing the ways in which we want to still move forward. I'm one of those people that's a firm believer in, of course, self-accountability, but even more self-reflection. And within that, we have to 
it's four of us on this this um this podcast or this you know uh this show and we're constantly you know checking ourselves and making sure that we're on point hell i even just in my personal life i call black all the time and i'm like yo did i handle this situation right or could i have done this better or like and sometimes i have to think to myself like yo how would cam do this how would ryan do this and just what would Jesus do yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's not usually rational. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, like, um, so within that, critiquing myself and critiquing others, and it's become an art form that we are going to express to you in this episode. Definitely. Yeah. And we've to piggyback off of conversations together. Of life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we do better in X, Y, and Z spaces. We and seen still things. could do better a lot of stuff. Still could you know, do see, better. See things and to pick off of Terrell's point about self reflection, sometimes it's a painful process to critique yourself and to really be honest with yourself. So, um, very painful. It hurts. And sometimes you have to confront that. But it is what it is. Yeah, it's a necessity. So, we're talking about self critique. So, I guess. Um, kind of thinking about that first before we even get to BPM, because we are on BPM, so we're not like watching it from the outside. Our shows on BPM, we are members of the channel as mm -hmm. content creators, not just as viewers. Um, and there was a um, somebody that com com there's an article really, it was like it was within a book of Chairman Miles called Combating Liberalism or Combat Liberalism. I always go to this in organization. I'm not going to read all of it because, again, we want to get through. But there are some things that I think raises the point for even some of our own critiques about ourselves and how we could handle it. So something he says, the whole thing is fire. I would suggest people read it. But he says uh, one of the ways that liberalism goes wrong within organization, he says, uh, to let things slide for the sake of peace and friendship when a person has clearly gone wrong and refrain from principled argument because he is an old acquaintance, a fellow townsman, a schoolmate, close friend, a loved one, old colleague, et cetera. Um, this is the result that both organization and individual harm. This is one type of liberalism. So basically to just maintain peace because we're cool with people, even though we have real issues with not necessarily individuals on this channel, but just the way things are ran at times, that's not principled. Um, another one, to indulge in irresponsible criticism in private instead of actively putting forward one suggestion to the organization to say nothing to their faces, but to gossip behind their backs, to say nothing at a meeting, but to gossip afterwards, to show no regard at all for principles of collective life, but to follow one's own inclination. This is the second type. So it's very easy to just, you know, we can, I, and I will admit, you know, I've talked to people off, you know, not just within this crew, but even other people say something about BPM, we'll have a conversation about it. You know, we can snicker, joke in the group chat, but no one either addresses it or we only kind of, we just kind of address it to this next point to uh, work half heartedly without a definite plan or direction to work perfunctively and muddle along uh, quote. So as long as one remains a monk, one goes on toiling the bell. So basically just kind of moving along to get along, not really pushing the argument. Um, so I do know some folks have talked and, and I have myself talked to people behind the scenes that are involved in leadership on BPM. But I think there are times when, you know, we just want to do our own show. So, you know, we don't um, always, we just kind of coast along. That doesn't mean we haven't raised criticism before. I'm not going to get into all of those situations because some of that will bring people into it that are not part of this episode. And I don't want to bring other people's names into that. Um, but, you know, we've, but I think we could have done better early on in pushing and not just being like, they ain't trying to hear us. So, you know, we out, you know. I think there's a point to be made where <clears throat> in that, in that, uh, in that quote, basically you just got to nip some shit in the bud real quick. Yeah. It is what it is. Like there's been times me and black have been friends for like, we've been brothers for a while. And there are times where like, I'll do something and, he knows he can do that with me. Like, hey, look, that's not cool. We need to nip that in the bud right now. And that's just where it's at, where we've, you know, some stuff, especially when it comes to different organizations, 
we'll prolong it because we're cool and we hope in hopes that things will change and stuff like that. Mm. Really, you just need to just you, 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 yeah, you, you need to say your piece to handle that right now. Yeah. And if the relationship or you know the whatever the situation is, if it's strong enough, yeah, it's gonna handle that critique. It's gonna handle that and it's gonna take it as you know. Hopefully, it takes you know takes it as not a negative, but as a point of like, hey, look, this is something we need to work on. This can't go forward like this. We need to do something or we need to change this. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. As a person who's been a part of an organization that is now split and fractured in so many different ways, um, reading through this article, Combating, Li Combating Liberalism by um, Chairman Mao, these are the things that could have been implemented in organization that I was part of uh, last year, and it could have saved us a lot of time. But again, with organizations, we're only as strong as, I mean, our leaders. So um, that's why we always got to hold ourselves to a certain regard. Um, like Terrell said, how we do with each other, we hold ourselves to the same principles. I know Black will give it to me 100%. I know Cam and Terrell will do the same thing. Like, oh, maybe this isn't the right thing for you to be a part of, or maybe this isn't the right approach. But um. Is the water call the water cooler conversation or the talk about mm -hmm. like the, yeah. the the after episode conversations? That's mm -hmm. you know we we do what we do we are gonna do what we do whatever yeah and just sidebars and sidebars it is what it is yeah. but if we're not addressing it it's not nothing's gonna change it's not being productive it's not benefiting us at, at in in the long run so and mm -hmm. we also just have to take into consideration um the impact that can be made right like you beefing with your homegirl is one thing like nobody care i mean maybe your small friend group might care and you know try to fix it or not and then your friend group is fractured nothing that's gonna have a drastic impact on the collective of our people but when we're talking about um you know our channel that has a lot of great things happening that we that I believe we get a lot of information out to people. I think from the responses we've got, not just from our show, but for other shows and the things that we've built together, the organizations that folks have gotten plugged into because of the things that um, it, that we've all shared on this channel, that this is not something that we can just continue to let simmer and, and create factions and fractures across the, the space. Like that's not that's not going to do anything good. The only thing that is going to do is cause a larger um, break in our ability to actually continue to put out great things that could help other people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, yeah. this is more important than just the key key about it in the group chat. There have been some things that were key keyable. Yeah, um, and 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 and, 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 and laugh, but other stuff yeah. is like no 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 like thinking long-term, thinking of where we want to go with our show, thinking about where other people want to go, thinking about the impact that we want to make. We've said this time and time again, like we could care less about like being viral or, you know, all of that shit. We're not here to just be social media content creators. We're really here to make sure that we're doing our part in helping get our people free, really making sure folks know better so we can do better. Yeah. And, you know, lastly, before we get into the main criticism, criticisms <laughs> um i think you know again like like cam said and like it's been noticed like bpm has a lot of good things going for it i think um like cam said we want to help organize our people in that channel the channel at least strives to do that um i think online specifically it's one of the few black left like left wing channels i don't mean black as in the content of creators i mean like the actual audience <laughs> Is, is black and it's very hard if you're in, in, dealing with any kind of left wing anything online to find anything that has mainly black people watching it that's, and you can get into why it's like that or whatever and that's not even a knock on other people's channels like that's what y'all do i'm just saying like it's one of the few channels when you look when we look at our demographics when you just look at the names of people in the chat <clears throat> the people who will come on the morning show or come on earn your leisure sometimes when they just invite people off the platform almost you know it's black people like primarily black people and you know 
that is important to us because there's a lot of left stuff ends up in white spaces, you know, and it feels like you're not talking to black people and you learn all this shit and you got all these ideas, you socialism, communism, but and you talking to crackers the whole time. So it's dope to mm-hmm. actually talk. So to to niggas like just being straight up. <laughs> so, yeah, no, you're, not, you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, that's hey, real, 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 real quick. Real. You said earn your leisure, or earn your liberation. Man. Yeah, earn your liberation. Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Definitely not earn your leisure. Definitely not. Definitely that. not that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. definitely not that. Uh, conversation <laughs> you could be having with white folks, it just don't hit the fucking same when it's yeah. with black people. And that and that Bro. this channel this channel brings that. Bro. Yeah. I love that about our channel. That's yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's sometimes it's easy to escape and have like actual black conversation about black yeah. politics, black liberation, black freedom, black history, black culture, all these things. And I can and, say, yeah, yeah. and, it's and cool. it, it doesn't have to be filtered through like the lens, like how um, a white lens or even the lens of academia in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, you always got to explain like well, yeah. in the black community. Yeah, bro, you know, we don't have to do that on this channel. No. It's like, and even no, the bro. white folks who do rock with BPM, when they come to it, they understand that, right? So white folks right. in the other group, there's, there isn't any like filtering where in the black community, we do this, like you see on a Netflix doc or something. Like we're not doing that. Like that's, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's an important thing and that's why we want to you know stay on the channel and maintain it but it's you know but it doesn't that doesn't that that doesn't mean other things can pass but it does mean that's one of the real seriously positive things about the channel so, so yeah. with that being said like we here with black uh power media we have something solid something that has a lot of potential in it and as we go into this critique and about to pass it to black this is where we're like, okay, we want to do it. What we have here, we're critiquing it because we want it to be better. We want things to grow, change, and progress. So, Black, take it over. You got it. All right. So, even though this ain't a normal episode, we still doing the monologue thing just to lay out the argument. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, <clears throat> BPM is a well meaning online black radical platform that mostly provides critical analysis for black African people who are starved of it elsewhere. Yet, and still, it currently lacks the strength and structure to live up to its own potential. Behind the radical presentation is a scarcity of organized principles, working definitions, and active logistics in place to solidify a unified direction. Thus, the meaning of Black power is a matter of broad interpretation. For example, there is no working definition of Black power that exists throughout the channel. As a consequence, BPM can lack clarity at times. This lack of clarity can lead to unnecessary conflicts, both internal and external, well-intended but questionable business practices. And most importantly, this lack of clarity can blur any revolutionary vision for how we want to move forward as a channel and as a propaganda arm for Black liberation. This is not to say everyone must ideologically agree on everything or share all the same values, but we argue there must still be a formal structure to solidify the principles we do agree on to build a better channel. Without this structure, we are prone to become another YouTube channel that posts content of a revolutionary brand for engagement, like many of the networks that we criticize. There can be no principled struggle without defined principles. Otherwise, we're relying on the fleeting individual morality of members to keep us in good shape. The moment that anyone devolves into reactionary behavior, there is no formal structure to protect us against this vulnerability. Thus, there is no means to hold ourselves accountable when needed. If BPM were to crumble, this lack of principled structure would be the primary reason. A common retort espoused by members of BPM, including Black Myths, is to encourage people to join an organization. We say organizations need organizations are needed not only because our enemy is organized, but also as a means for us to work out our issues in ways that build comradeship, community, discipline, and power. Yet, how can we challenge our listeners to join an organization if we are not modeling in ourselves? Of course, BPM is not a civic or political organization in the same capacity as the Black Alliance for Peace or community movement builders, but it is still an entity with members, finances, and proto-radical goals, no matter how loosely defined. If we are to assist radical movements across the world most effectively, we need to practice the principles that we platform. Shit, even capitalists have written out values, regardless of how destructive they may be. Last year on October 11, 2023, 
The BPM Board of Owners posted a job offer for an operations manager of the channel. This was necessary and a well-respected move. It was also an acknowledgement that the owners needed help as achieving organization is no easy task. Nevertheless, despite interviewing multiple candidates, myself included, a decision has yet to be made in the four months since posting the job offer. Presumably, it appears the same lack of cohesion that inspired the need for hire is why there is not there has not yet been one as of yet. We we hope we can foster stronger communication that will that will move the ball forward, though. In the end, our criticism extends beyond a specific job offer or a single show. Today, as we offer an assessment to BPM, we argue that any BPM challenges such as infighting, beefing, logistical challenges, uh, resource management, ideological confusion, selfishness, lower viewer engagement, low viewer engagement, marketing problems, etc., stems in part from a lack of organization as a channel. Of course, we exist within a larger corporate entity of YouTube who produces an algorithm that works against our, against our success. Still within the things we can control, we believe we can do better. As one of the co-owners of the channel, uh, Kalanji Changa preaches, quote, our organizations need to be organized. Here we are arguing for more formal structure to set the channel in a clearer direction, not the structure for the sake of bureaucracy or dogmatic rules or just a bunch of rules for the sake of having rules, but so we can define a clear vision that we all want BPM to be. Sloganeering is insufficient. We understand our critique may be met with ad hominem attacks, unfounded accusations of disloyalty dressed in faux militancy from some individuals, but we move forward regardless because we believe in the potential of BPM and how it can aid our African movements across the diaspora. With that, I end with a quote from the in-prison intellectual and new African prisoner, the late Atiba Shana. Quote, a movement is not merely anti this or that, but also for something. A movement is two-sided of all or all-sided organized attempt to promote or attain a specific objective. It seeks to reach this objective by simultaneously working to displace, i.e. divest, to create, i.e. the Tanzanian national liberation. It seeks to get rid of something old and unnecessary, i.e. colonial violence, a.k.a. racist violence, while struggling to realize something new and necessary, i.e. a socialist republic of New Africa. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to do... There's three main critiques here. It's on the issues of principles and definitions, or just say principles, um, channel management, and channel economics. And then we will give recommendations, and then we'll be done, and then y'all can shoot us up or whatever y'all want to do. Um, you can shoot me. I shoot back. I ain't, I ain't say we're going to lay out. The, the typing. Yeah. If you don't like to make it back home. <laughs> 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 but like, I mean, at the end of the day, like we we we're all figuring this out collectively, and so we want to make sure that everybody gets grace. Like this is not just to bash our channel. We value our channel. We value um, the people on our channel, and we want to see it do better. Um, this is not we just let family do whatever, and nobody says anything for the sake of family. It is. I'm going to call you out with love and, and grace because we all deserve it. None of us are perfect. Um, but this is bigger than just the people that are on the channel. Yeah. You won't even hear that many names because everybody's kind of either indicted or not here. Um, yeah. Real quick to remind everybody, BPM is obviously everyone knows it stands for Black Power Media. Of course, I want to read, um, you know, it says on online, it's a Black Radical Independent media platform we seek to challenge a narrative about black politics and black addition we're going to come back to that it was originally a youtube channel um to my memory that was under that mix what i like which is dr balls insignia before it became black power media um and then the owners slash founders are kalanji changa dr jared ball kamal franklin and the year doctor um just to establish for those who, for whatever reason, may not know that. Um, I, I assume almost everybody watching does know. All right. So um, first, and I would say foremost, to the point of our issue about structure, um, is there, like I said in the monologue, it's just a lack of principles and definitions. So there is no definition of Black power 
despite us calling our channel Black Power. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, Dr. Ball um, doing the myth of Black buying power, his book actually documents how, you know, Black Power, which was technically had did have a definition. There's a whole book written about Black Power by Kwame Ture and Charles Hamilton. But even then, with definition, it struggled. But so you can imagine without definition how the Black Power could be co-opted in general. And we talk about co-optation on this channel all the time. But we can't talk about co-optation and we don't even have like definitions that govern ourselves. So if you go to the website, again, I want all this on screen so nobody thinks we are um, making it up. Say what? Making it up. Yeah, we're not capping. So this is the website and it says this is what is defined as the mission. Um, and it's basically what I read. We seek to challenge the narratives about Black politics and Black tradition, and then it just lists um, the shows, Learn Gay Culture, which is no longer an ongoing show anymore. I mix what I like. Um, remix Morning Show, a future program will deliver news and inform information on our community and, and other needs to break through today's mainstream propaganda machine. Now, that's a nice start, but it's again, there's not... If Black Power Media, which I think is a great name, there's no clear definition and we'll get to why this matters um, along other things, but there's not a layout of it. So what this can allow is for, you know, people to kind of make it up as they go and do things that, you know, a lot of us might be offended by or, or don't agree mm -hmm. with, but there's not really a means of checking that because there's not really any clear clarity on what we're doing. So it kind of just gets made up as we go. It doesn't mean everything's wrong and everything that's posted here is bad. It's just if the goal is to promote, you know, revolution and stuff, you need to have at least some working definitions to start. They don't save everything. We've all been in organizations that have definitions and still aren't good. Um, but it is a but when just for instance, today, one organization I'm in, somebody said something that was a fairly unprincipled. And the way that conversation got fixed was by posting the principles of unity that our organization has and just bringing us back to you know the things that the things that matter um so because we all have agreed to these things so it's not us just making it up in our own individualism yeah. it's these are things that we stand under this is the banner that we all sit under um now some of the owners uh or not some all of the owners on the channel um belong to organizations which is a positive so we're going to go through all these organizations have some version of principles of unity. So this isn't a foreign concept uh, by any stretch. So um, Black Alliance for Peace, for instance, I believe um, at the very least, I believe I know Kamau is in Black Alliance for Peace. So again, I'm going to share the screen here. Um, right, Black Alliance for Peace has its own principles of unity. And we stick to these as a member of Black Alliance for Peace, I can say, right to self-defense. I'm not going to read all the different definitions, self-determination, anti-imperialism, working class foundation, intersectionality, anti-patriarchy, decolonization, prison support, black unity, black radical tradition, anti-capitalism, Southern roots. Now, me as a member, I could disagree with some of these. I can whatever, but I know being in Black Alliance for Peace, we've actually struggled through some of these definitions. Uh, we actually changed one of these uh, not too long ago because I think it was the anti-patriarchy one. Because, you know, we didn't, didn't think it lived up to what it needed to be. The issue is not about creating a bunch of robots or people who all agree on one thing. It's just when you have consistent things that we agree to, even when we argue, we have we have a we have a foundation of unity that we can argue from. Um, yeah. And we don't have that foundation. You can see in different shows, sometimes things can get kind of out of control, in my opinion, because I don't know if we have those found. I don't, I don't think we have those foundational principles, um, despite being a channel for oh, um, nearly three years now. No, I was going to say when we, we you brought up the, the BPM website, one thing I did appreciate about that is that they did call it a, pro, a media project. And in that respect, when you see the word project, you're thinking, okay, maybe this is not a complete thing. Mm. This is, we're still working on, which means that they're open to critiques like this and that they're open to change and um i'm hoping after this episode they're open to you know establishing that structure that we're looking for 
the principles, the definitions and stuff that we're going for. So I do appreciate that part of it. The, yeah, definitely. And even yeah. um, just to go through, I don't, I'm not going to run through everybody's stuff as much, but like, I just, again, I want to show everybody's in the org that, you know, this is community movement builders just come out to um, self-determination. Again, these are our values, self-determination, mm -hmm. sustainability, leadership. And they all have written out descriptions of what those things mean. I need not go through all of them because, you know, y'all can go check that out. All of this will be in the notes. Um, I also think it's just imperative that, like, these things exist because this guides the work that gets done. Mm -hmm. There is no nothing that is laid out and that's not to say we know that every single person within um the bpm has values of some sort we are showing you right now the organizations that just about everybody in some capacity um are in and so these things are important to folks but if as a collective we don't have something that we live then there is no growth map both internally for us to be utilizing as a guide on how we communicate and share out information and um, showcase our goals to others, as well as no way for the very people that we're trying to impact for other community members to know what we're about, mm -hmm. aside from a collective of folks who are talking about ways to get free. Yeah, yeah. yeah and also, I mean, it keeps them down, it keeps away a lot of confusion a lot of confusion if we just had a, everything written out values principles whatever we, bpm wants to call it um it will keep us focused uh, in so many words everybody said the same thing but it keeps us focused on what we need to do what our purpose is what our work needs what work needs to be done what is um the goals that we are trying to achieve all of this and i feel like this is helpful because i mean the, the system that we're working against is already really organized. Nari has their principles and their values already, <laughs> you know, no matter how destructive that they are, already lined out. So we need to be able to match that energy. Bro, these niggas look like 80s rappers that never <laughs> make I did not want to. I was, I saw this. Bro, I, was I, was I, was trying not to. I was looking Bro. at while talking. I was just like, I'm going to, I'm focused. I'm going to focus on, I was trying to focus on Black's face. I was, I was trying so hard. Hey, you I was know, trying I keep so a poker hard. face, but I already knew that wasn't. Yeah, we'll cut that out. But it speaks for uh, okay, no. now. I won't, I won't collage you to see that because I know he's gonna talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, gonna talk. The ear doctor, the only one that I'm respecting right now. <laughs> these, these yeah, this is an interesting picture. This isn't really a critique. It's just you know, but uh, but I'm just uh, this is up for the sake of you know, this is an organization, FTP movement. Uh, and then lastly, Dr. Ball, Noah's in um, AARP, I'm ARP, AAPRP, our African People's Revolutionary Party, and they again under what is new Nkrumah or Nkrumah terrorism. And then these are the principles, and you see once again a set of principles revolutionary African personality, pan Africanism as a primary objective. Like, this is just clear what the goal is. Mm -hmm. You can judge, like Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture says, you know, you judge, you don't judge something by its followers, you judge it by its principles, right? So we can say Christianity has, he used that example, you can say Christians, you judge Christians by their followers, especially in the United States, you know, Christianity would be a useless religion in many cases, especially if we're talking about white folks, uh, you know, but if you want to judge it by its principles, even if you don't agree with Christianity, at least you have to deal with it on the foundation of what it actually is. And if it's not being followed well by its followers, then you then you can question the principles as to what is it about the the foundation of this thing that is so weak that you know so many people are doing whatever. Like, but again, it just lays out a certain foundational structure. And then lastly, uh, hood communists. Is, you know, you can make an argument that since these are not media organizations, it's different. But hood communists is a media organization, and hood communists um, has its own principles of unity as well. African unity, anti-imperialism, decolonization, self-determination, anti-patriarchy, abolition, and my favorite, no dear white people articles. Like they literally say, don't send us this shit. We don't want any. My favorite. I remember when I first went to the site and I was like, okay, I feel like I'm at home. Um, so these are just things that help, you know, clarify what we doing, 
what's the position well again why principles matter just come back to that it keeps politics in command um because other things and what we mean by that, that's an old phrase i think that originated with mao politics and command versus economics and demand other things that demand like what is like we're talking about kind of like with the prison episode we just did what is the driving force behind things everything has like things that drive it forward it's the main thrust of it uh you want your principles to be the thing driving you not petty beefs not whatever mood I'm in, you know, not just kind of whatever the vibe is, what exactly exactly is driving BPM. That's never really been clear. Yeah, so you get, without, yeah. And without that, like, we can't collectively be unified or and have a unified vision, regardless of personal differences. Like, so often we talk about how, like, Nope. A lot of people have different versions of how we get free and how we do it, yada, yada, yada. But when you're joining an org, the premise is that you are joining something that is aligned with your values, your goals, and the work that you want to do um, to help us get free. And so if we are not, uni we don't have a unified vision, then that's how easily personal differences get into play. And then we cannot collectively make and not individually, sorry, make decisions on whether or not this is a space where we want to stay. And I say we as in people on all the shows um, and how we work towards that unified vision collectively, regardless of whether or not we're going to struggle on how to get there. If we have a vision, then we know the direction that we need to go. And so then when we do collectively have disagreements, we can always go right back and align right back there. And you already talked about that earlier even with a small issue within your organization. Yeah, and it's like, even, and it's, again, these aren't, like I've learned being an org, these things are never set in stone, like they're frozen. So you can always add and, and remove principles. You can change things. You can say, well, exactly. this, is what, this doesn't work anymore. Let's do it this way. But you that's why you need organization because it's easier to come to agreement. Like, okay, we need to pivot. That yeah. don't work. <laughs> you know, like our show, mm -hmm. used to, our show originally was a, it wasn't good, but it was like a satirical show. You, you go back and listen. Yeah. Oh, and, but we did have some foundational principles which we're about to get to. Um, and it helped us like figure out a better way to do it because the satirical thing was particularly with the personnel we had at the time just didn't work. You know, <laughs> so it was just it wasn't mm -hmm. really it wasn't really hitting. And again, we're not saying everybody has to agree on everything. We don't all agree on everything. But I think right. sometimes too many, too often people say, well, we don't have to agree on everything. Yeah, but what is the means of working through the things we do disagree about? What mm -hmm. is the means of doing that? As opposed to just being like, well, I don't agree. Well, I can be like, I don't agree with Ryan, but it don't mean I'm going to punch him in the face because we agree that that's not how you handle problems. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. That's why we have a, that's why most organizations have a governance committee because all bylaws and all purposes, everything is subject to change. They can all be amended. As a, you know, Ugh. about naming the organization, I was chair of a governance organization and we were in charge of um, changing everything from contracts to um, 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 interviews, interview questions, everything. So like Black said, these are all subject to change. They're flexible. Um, we can not all set in stone completely. We can always change definitions, tweak things here and there. As time changes, a lot of meanings of words also change along with culture. So we can always tweak yeah, that. Because you're learning, from, if you're, at least in my opinion, if you're learning from the material world, you're like, you're you're making adaptations based on the practice because you're like, that doesn't actually help with yeah. what we said our goal was or our goal itself isn't actually what it needs to be. We need to change our goals because it would be better to do this than that. But again, you have to be engaged in that practice. We don't at BPM have meetings about these things. Um, I don't know if there's meetings amongst the uh, ownership about these things, but if it is, it, these things don't make it back to the general members of the channel. It's just being honest. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and lastly, or one of you know, a few other things, this is a way to provide a positive example for people who are looking to understand organization. We should reflect it ourselves as we stated. And it's also, there aren't principles. It's also hard to hold people accountable within the, the base that you have because what am I saying you did wrong other than something that offended me personally if you can just make it up? If that's what we mean by not having clear definitions. If there's no real 
yeah. clarity on what things mean then i can be like well they did this and it's like well you know and maybe we get it maybe it doesn't mean we can't sort those things out sometimes everything doesn't have to be written down but it's just mm -hmm. easier when there are a clarity of things and we are living by those things to hold folks accountable if not things as we'll get to sometimes can become a little bit uneven even when people would mean well <laughs> because there's just not really a culture or means of holding po folks accountable. Folks talk about holding people accountable online all the time, but the way you really hold people accountable is when you do have like an established set of values and you're in a struggle together, not on Twitter or something, but in a struggle together. So we're trying to make a propaganda arm for black liberation that needs to be principles to hold each other accountable. If not, you know, thankfully nobody on the channel has done anything too crazy. <laughs> So we have yeah. decent people on our channel, right? So we're not dealing with like a bunch of corrupt idiots, thankfully. But if we, if yeah. anyone becomes a corrupt idiot tomorrow, what's the means of holding said corrupt idiot accountable? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we're vulnerable to that because we don't really, that's not any point of emphasis. Right. You know? We're not going to have like a black executive from Chase Bank be on the, the channel anytime soon just because they're black. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's part of uh, struggling with principles right yeah <laughs> what black said you, but even you a gotta... corrupt even a corrupt banker at chase is, he has to deal with so many so much corporate oversight that if they mess up the bottom line they gone you know what i mean it's exactly because <laughs> so, there's exactly. so many lawyers involved now i think that's too bureaucratic but i'm saying it is a structure you know here we're talking about having this channel that does all these things what's the structure um speaking of really quickly Go ahead. Um, even with applying structure, you don't have to surrender the vibes. Because I love vibes. I love good vibes. And having a structure does not mean you have to surrender those vibes. Mm -hmm. You can build those vibes within that good structure the same way. Like, we, we do it all the time, and I, I don't want to make us the, you know, the poster child for, like, the best, you know, we're, right. we're the best here. Because we get shit wrong, and we... You know, but we talk about shit all the time. Like we're friends. We really literally talk all all the time. But within that structure and you knowing the definition of what your organization is and what you guys are trying to accomplish and everything, the vibes will come with it. If you like you don't have to worry about the vibes if y'all are good people and y'all are straight. You don't have to sacrifice the structure or the integrity of your show for that. Yep, it keeps the wrong vibes out too. <laughs> yeah, that part. <laughs> like it, when people say, "Like, oh, I don't want it to get this kind of vibe." If your yeah, show, your intention and your integrity is all in the right place, the vibes will come with it. Yeah, and it doesn't. Amen. Yeah, I think people think Amen, they're gonna lose. Right. They think they're gonna We're lose. Not, their, can't stop. People think they're gonna lose their like individuality, or I don't like rules, uh -huh. bro. It's like, well, again. There's a, there's a, uh, I'm gonna read somebody here soon, but they said there's a line between like, you know, domination and just like no accountability. There's a, there is a space to be found between like, you know, just a co corrupt, like top down structure that tells everybody what to do and just willy nilly anybody does what they do. Like, yeah. and I don't I think BPM is, I think BPM ha is in there in the middle, so, but it's just like it needs to be more formalized in our opinion. Like, it's just what it is. Um, so, um, move no, quickly through what Black Myths does just to give people so they have a sense of we try to practice what we preach. So we do have a methodology of picking myths. You know, we if a myth, we've done a whole episode on this, so I'm going to make this very quick. Go listen to clarifying our method. But if a myth, you know, doesn't have a material impact, if it's not quantifiable, if it isn't, doesn't rise to some level of popularity, we don't want to talk about it. You know, now again, we're not going to go deep into that. So people may mean, well, what do those things mean? We have definitions for them, but for the sake of not being on here for two hours, not going to talk about it. But we do ask questions like, does this myth blame black people? Is it a myth that tends to to step on the bottom of black people? Does it indict um individuals instead of systems? Right? What policies and choices by power are behind this myth? You know, what are the adverse effects that spawn from this? But these are things that we do to understand whether we want to cover something. We don't just walk down the street and be like, man, there's a black person wearing some shit I ain't never seen. 
we should do an episode about that. You know what I mean? Like it's not, you, it's, there is some, some methods or approach to what we do. And again, there are other people in this channel who have methods. So we're not saying we're the only ones. It's just to give y'all an example of like how we approach our own show. So yeah. sometimes when people email us stuff, we respectfully decline or just sometimes ignore uh, because it's like, it doesn't really fall within that space it doesn't mean it's a bad idea it's just that's not how we want, tend to approach things as our show it doesn't mean it shouldn't it's not it doesn't even mean it doesn't even mean it's not an important conversation it just may not be something that we find to be valuable within our method and our approach to what we do but that keeps us in line when even those of us throw in a miss and we're like eh, you know yeah. um we're also so, trying to get to like the what is the fundamental contradiction of something so sometimes certain myths are more symptoms we want to get to a deeper level. Like these are our things we talk through as a channel or as, excuse me, as a show to have a better sense of what we need to do. You know, just again, to give people an example. My bad. I was going to say some of that stuff you might want to, you know, subscribe to the Patreon for. Yeah. Future episodes. Grab stuff we might get into. Yeah. After we get kicked off. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but, <Sorry>. uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, I think just like going back to the importance of when we talk about like how structure guides the ways in which we move, like when we talk about like how we focus on our methodology, our material impact, is it quantifiable? And like, mm -hmm. how does this impact Black culture and Black people historically? Um, talking about like the popularity and the widespreadness of the myth, like that is directly aligned within how we choose. And so like when we talk about like what we want for the channel, we want to be able to say collectively, we pick our shows, we pick our topics, we focus on X, Y, and Z based off of this, and that guides how collectively as a channel we move versus yeah. Black people fuck with this, so we fuck with this. Because that's not all going to actually be sufficient enough to guide our people in order to... There are a, enough, a plethora of podcasts, of shows that just focus on pop culture um, and a bunch of bullshit that is not actually important, that will not get you free. Like, we do not need to be talking about Nicki Minaj, like, at all. Um, or how much we going to split the date. Yeah. Or, yes, or $200 <laughs> dates, or, like, whether or not, like, you got your Valentine something for Valentine's Day. Like, these are not We're not, yeah. We're not doing a baddies review anytime soon. On a material level. However, if a part of what we're talking about is Black mental health and substance abuse, and then we pull Nicki Minaj in as a conversation, not on our channel, because that's not what we focus on, but as a part of a collective um, example, then that is a way in which we bridge pop culture to talk about things that actually impact us on a larger scale in order to impact people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's not just Definitely. gossip. Yeah, it's not just not gossip. Just us gossiping. Yeah. Save that for your group chat. Every day on Twitter, people are like, "Take the mics away." And yeah, and there's too our much to not be another thing that is mm. where where mm. like the very important things that we all collectively discuss gets muddled with bullshit to where people are being deterred from actually engaging with us because they don't recognize and because nuance is not something everybody knows how to navigate we cannot pretend that every single person who is a listener knows how to navigate that and so if there's no balance if there's no structure of what we are aiming to do and how we frame and then move as a group then it just allows too much space for fluff which then could potentially really deter people who are actively trying to get away from the amount of fluff propaganda that's being pushed out right. and actually looking for people um, and information to actually help them. Right. And we don't want that to become a, um, a radical, radical gossip, which I think unfortunately yeah. <laughs> um, is a real consequence. Now, and I don't even just being on BPM and sometimes that's just, it just becomes radical gossip. I don't know what we're really trying to achieve. Because, there's, you know, we we are still human beings, even if we call ourselves whatever we want to call ourselves. We exist in our little spaces and there's all kinds of drama that happens in our spaces, just like everywhere else. You know, just because you call yourself revolutionary or radical or whatever you want to call yourself doesn't change that fact. And yeah. I think sometimes there's a tendency to um, dress up radical critique as, as uh, or dress up gossip as radical critique. 
you know, and, and again, we've all been guilty of it, including myself, you know, and sometimes I don't even think we know when we're doing it to be fair, but I'm just saying like, there's a tendency to turn things into, you know, well, there is this angle because you was, you just want to talk about it. So you want to force it into this, like, well, you know, well, black women because of Nicki Minaj, it's just like, yeah, probably not. You know what I mean? So, so it's just like, but if there's not a clear goal and what you're moving towards and what your principles are and you're not practicing those things, then it just opens up the door for that kind of conversation, even if you mean well. And that's just what it is. So I want to read something on structurelessness, the problem that, and then we'll be done with this specific um, point or this specific um, critique of, of principles and definitions and the importance of it. And then, you know, I could say whatever. Um, so this is, uh, this is from Joe Freeman. Uh, this is actually a, um, a women liberation activist from the seventies. And there's an article called the tyranny of structurelessness. Um, and the issue here we'll get to is about informal structures and how that can become a problem. Uh, so I'm gonna, I don't know if I'll read all of these quotes, but um, she says, contrary to what we would like to believe, there is no such thing as a structuralist group. Any group of people, whatever nature that comes together for any length of time, for any purpose will inevitably structure itself in some fashion. The structure may be flexible. It may vary over time. It may evenly or unevenly distribute tasks, power, and resources over the members of the group but it will be formed regardless of abilities, personalities, or intentions of people involved. Later, she says, for everyone to have the opportunity to be involved in a given group and to participate in activities, the structure must be explicit, not implicit. The rules of decision-making must be open and available to everyone. This can happen only if they are formalized. Um, lastly, she says, this is not to say the formalization of a structure group will destroy the informal structure it usually doesn't but it does hinder the informal structure from having predominant control and make available some means of attacking it if the people involved are not at least responsible to the needs of the group at large structurelessness is organizationally impossible so a lot of times people will say well we don't need structure we just we just know what we need to do there is no version of this in life <laughs> where you won't have any kind of structure so whether you write it down or you don't you're going to have certain tendencies because you practice things every day and you're going to coalesce around certain things and certain rules, even if they're unstated, even if they're not openly said, that will happen. <laughs> there, you, We've all been in, we can use very petty examples. We're talking about gossip. We've all been in friend groups where it's clear the friends who kind of dictate the thing and it's clear the friends who kind of are the popular one everybody goes with. And that that friend can be the nicest person in the group because you don't tend to write down things in friend groups and you shouldn't, you don't need value. You don't need principles of unity in your group chat. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's totally fine. But when you try to scale that friend group to become an organization, right? All those informal things, the people who live close to each other, the people who have a background, those people will call less and there will be a power center among that. Now BPM is an interesting hybrid because it does have a stated, um, board of owners and and board of you know of founders but beyond that um there's not really a lot of like sense of who's moving what beyond just the logistical things obviously like making sure the bills get paid and things like that so there's a tendency for things to skew you know to where to to certain areas not because people are trying to get over on anyone but because it's just a lot of informal structure and it hasn't been clarity about how we want to build things. So the people who already have an inside advantage are probably going to benefit the most. The problem with informal networks is there are no ability to hold them accountable. <laughs> you know, because what are the rules? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then the <laughs> inform, informal networks tend to monopolize influence. And then when you try to criticize them, they can be like, well, you know, that's just the tendency of anything. It doesn't matter who's involved, no matter how good or bad the person is. Sorry, Kim. No, I was just going to say, like, even something as simple as my book club, uh, my local book club has order, you know, and there are, a, but the same way that there are a bunch of YouTube channels and there are a bunch of different podcasts, there are a bunch of things that are very similar. Everyone functions differently when you function. For example, there are book clubs that only focus on books written by Black women or Black women of color. Um, I mean, or women of color as a whole, or for example, we we vote um, on a book. You know, we have 
three people that pretty much coordinate everything to make sure that we have a date for, we have a location for the book club. We post a vote every month on the books. No, no one person doesn't just pick that out. And we thought of these things. We talked about these things. And when new ideas come up, we revise and we move. But overall, there, there is even a structure and something that is intended to be a leisurely activity, you know? Um, and that's just on a simple scale. So like when we're trying to do something big, like if we don't have anything except people who are, who we consider to be the leaders of our channel, um, but there's no structure, there's no body that, there's no method in which we come to if there's an issue or how we collectively solve them, no votes. Um, if it's just conversations here and there that take place, then things fall to the wayside. And, yeah, and, and these things don't last because we have had instances, for example, when we used to get ideas for new shows, we used to all get an email and the idea for the show would be on there and folks would reply all and discuss whether or not we wanted the show on the channel. Um, and sometimes, you know, you got outvoted and that's fine. It, but it, but there were also times where those things, there were things that just got voted because they sounded great, but they weren't necessarily aligned. Um, and I can't even say what they were aligned to because we don't have a vision. Yeah. Now, I remember even speaking of that, I remember when um, earlier on, uh, me and Sundiata, uh, uh, who has a show on the channel on Thurs on, uh, the, the third Thursday of every month, um, and we used to just have people who were submitting widely different things, and we were just like, none of this. like So we had to create like a, a, a sheet that you had to fill out to clear clarify where you stood so we could kind of weed out people who wanted to just submit anything. <laughs> You know, that was that was just that's so it's like we've tried. I'm not again, we're not saying BPM has never done anything. Um, but it's just it's never to our to in our opinion gotten the sufficient amount of energy um to to involve from everyone, not just the owners, because they can't do everything either. You know, but we've just as a channel have not and um, this is critical of all of us, including ourselves, have not marshaled the energy towards those things, even if we still would say that's primarily the job of leadership that's not that's not only on leadership um so that's that's the principles and, and vision that's the issue and again structure is going to be a running thing so next channel management now this one's a little more dicey uh <laughs> to discuss um because this gets into okay you see we don't necessarily have the greatest foundation as far as what our vision is what we want to do um there are everyone has their own idea of it um but it's never been quite clarified and so when the channel started um you know the the model was um to have a lot of different types of shows of some kind of variety of black radicalism that was like again it was an unstated thing because again this wasn't a formalized but that was that just was the vibe it was like we need a show on cooking and we need a show for kids and we it would be cool if we had one on spirituality and it would be cool if we had a show on news and we had a show about gaming if we had a show about sports like that was just the the general vibe was just just have an investigation show and then one day we're going to have a bunch of producers and so this 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 led to this thing where we had at at our peak, I don't, some of these shows, I don't, I don't know if they're still going, um, but that at our peak, we had roughly 20 shows, which is more shows than some cable channels have. Um, I mean, MTV <laughs> only showing Ridiculous on repeat, and now they done built back in Catfish. Yeah. So it's like we, and there wasn't really a plan and like, okay, what do we want to do with, like, how do we, how do we help these shows? What do we, how do we build them up? It was just like you submitted and you had an idea and we voted on it. That was that was enough. I want to be fair and say some of this stuff, even I have thought about, I'm sure the rest of y'all can say in retrospect, probably wasn't the best idea, but that's what we thought because we're learning as we go. And I mean, all of us. So this mm -hmm. isn't to say that BPM wanted to fail. We haven't failed, but to say that we wanted to like give certain shows 200 views or so. I don't think that was the goal, but I don't think that model necessarily served, you know, <laughs> the the overall company of people and it goes back to our earlier point about informal structures if this was already your channel 
prior to it becoming BPM and you already have a following, you're not going to be as hurt by that as people who don't have a following. If you look right. at any business, there has to be a way to kind of put an artist on or put, if it's for, for things that are like talking and very visible, how do you put those people on? How do you drive people to their thing? That's not something, you know, that we've ever really created, you know, overall. Um, so I think, you know, as a consequence, a lot of the stuff that was already popular has stayed popular and the other things haven't. And those are primarily owner related shows. That's just the morning show, you know, um, the different shows, Dr. Ball's on, Kalanji show. Um, only show that doesn't do as well is um on Sundays with Ear Doctor, talking about just performance on the numbers. We're not gonna critique anybody's content. Don't concern ourselves with that. Someone else can do that. We're just talking about the performance of it. Um, yeah. Now, Air Doctor also does produce the morning show, which does great in the mornings, to be fair. Um, so you can see you're going to share. The top one was a Dr. Ball, Dr. Ball video with um, related to Willie D and Boyce Watkins. And you have a bunch of Cornell West stuff, which still primarily involved um, owners doing most of those interviews. Um, then you have uh, only show on here that wasn't owner related was our show with VJ Rashad and we were lucky because VJ Rashad is a very popular person. That's within the last 365 days as of February 13th. Um, if you low over the last 90 days when you don't have any Cornell West content, as you can see, most of the shows that are popular are primarily I mix what I like related, um, almost all I mix what I like related or, or Dr. Barr related content, whether it's I mix what I like, earn your liberation, et cetera. Again, this is not hating on those shows for people who want to take it there. It's just to show you that this is a consequence of, of the model itself. Um, so you get, it just becomes top heavy, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then you get a, and then, and then when you start trying to promote those shows, as in you start creating clips and reels, which we've seen here recently, something that YouTube does is it knocks the the it only it's only going to recommend so many videos of a certain page if you post too many videos youtube won't post they won't recommend or or give send out a reminder to people about certain content so if the channel is flooded with uh, uh the content of a particular creator a lot of any other show that comes after that if it gets caught within that web it's going to get demoted in the amount of views that it gets it's because a lot of people that come to watch shows or notify like, oh, that's coming on. Let me go watch it now. Or, oh, that came on yesterday. Let me go watch it. People aren't going to get as many notifications after so many hits at a time. But again, coming back to structure, there's not anybody that manages this. The, the lanes get crowded at times. It's not a management of this. That's what we mean by channel management. So it's not mm -hmm. that Dr. Ball is trying to take all the attention. Not, we're not making that accusation. It's just a tendency of, of when you don't have that kind of structure in place. It's going to happen. And we're all vulnerable to these things. If we if we were in his position and we didn't have the structure, it'd be the same thing. You know what I mean? And our shows, again, we're not complaining about our views. That is what it is. You know? No, this, this part, uh, I, I just want to understand for myself. So, um, like you said, it's top heavy at the at the the model is top heavy, so we get a lot of I mix what I like, Dr. Ball, you know, so on for and then because that's kind of like like they po they're 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 posting like what how many how many times they post like almost every day? Yeah, I mean here lately it's been more I think I don't again, this is another thing, this isn't discussed, but here lately it's been more so there's more content, like videos, reels, stuff. And I think that's the push to improve the channel. But yeah. if you post, if we were, if 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 we all had our own show, we could just make this a different channel. We all had our own show. We we're all on the same channel. And in my show, let's say most people know me more than they know y'all. And I take my shows, and I have more shows on the channel than everyone else. And right. I clip my shows, as in I put out a ten minute clip ranting about police, another thirty minute clip talking about, you know, I don't know um politics or something you know killer mike you know whatever um and then 
you know, and then that, sh and then I post so many videos that's going to demote the other shows in their views on YouTube. That's how the algorithm responds, you know. Oh. Now, to be fair, you know, Dr. Ball isn't on, like, that's why I'm going to make sure this isn't a personal attack. Dr. Ball brings a lot of people onto his show, puts a lot of people in front of the camera. He's not always just talking to himself or whatever. So that's why I'm saying this isn't an accusation or an attack on him. This is just yeah, a tendency. Love Dr. Ball. We've had yeah. Dr. Ball on a million times. Yeah. This is more, that, this this seems like more of a thing of us not us not understanding the YouTube model and using that to our advantage when it comes to promoting different shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I said mm -hmm. we learn we learn as we go, and some of these things I didn't even think about when we first got here. Either. Am I wrong in saying that? Because it seems like I I get like the morning show and stuff like that that that's something that's gonna happen every day and i'm not saying it shouldn't at all but with us not taking advantage or understanding how to strategically use youtube to you know boost other shows under the morning show like our show other you know then that kind of that, that makes us suffer mm -hmm. yeah. especially when Especially when it breaks down into the economic part that we're going to go into later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to make sure I understood that for myself. No, no. And I think that helped for other people too. So thanks for asking that. Yeah, um, so yeah, I think um, lastly, there's, this is a, you know, I know we all hate capitalism and everything, but business principles are what they are. And some business principles, even if you're in a socialist society, you, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. So there's this thing called scale, and there's this thing called minimum viable product, and it, people will call it MVP. So there's a tendency when people start businesses, and BPM on some level is a business. It is something that you are trying to promote. It is it is an LLC. It is not a nonprofit, right? Like, that's just what it is. So, you know, y'all can deal with that however you want, but that's just what it is. So when you're, so so we don't get to rhetoric ourselves out of that reality, <laughs> like that's the, that's the reality that we're in. Um, and a lot of times when people want to start a business, they you know not knowing any better, um, they do this thing where like if you look on the picture that we're showing, what you see is a car, and they have this idea, this big idea that they want to get to to scale. Like I want to have this this um, car that has all the rims and all the shit on, I want to get to this big scale. When I get there, that'll be the best thing, you know, and I'm going to build up to this big idea and that's how I'll get there. Right. But if you see this picture here, it has one wheel, <laughs> then it has two wheels, then it has half a car. Then at four, it finally has a car. The problem with that is until you get to four, the car can't drive. <laughs> so you're building up a car that on its way there cannot deliver a service, you know, that's the minimum viable product, right? So BPM delivered a service as far as giving people content, not saying that, but often you will hear, if you, especially if you go back to some of our early content, you hear, we want to build up to a point, we have enough enough subscribers and, 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 mem and memberships, we can hire producers and we can do all these things, but the better approach is to scale slowly do small versions of that thing so you look at this the other picture which is the correct model according to this concept you have a skateboard skateboards on a car but you can get from point a to b on a skateboard then you have a scooter same thing if i if i need to if i want to deliver some food or maybe i can only deliver on my block but i can give them point a to b i can't get nowhere with one wheel but i can't get somewhere with a scooter then you get to the bike if i can drive a bike i can cover a little bit more ground motorcycle more ground, car, most, I can cover the most ground. But in each phase, what are you doing? You can do what you say you want to do. You're not waiting to the end. You may not be able to go as fast. You may not be able to cover as much ground. But in each phase, you can do what you want to do, right? Our you issue. You will post this picture, right? Because, <laughs> like, this is making so much sense right now. Yeah, it, it, it. And when I learned this, I was like, it was a, it admittedly was a kind of aha moment because a lot of people have big ideas and yeah. I've, I've been that person and it's like, but can I, can I execute, can I make a good episode for 500 people before I can make a good episode for 500,000 people, you know, 
versus I'm having a, I'm making shitty episodes, hoping one day I get enough resources to make a good episode. Right. Like that's just an analogy. Again, that's not an accusation on anyone's. You can't own. just decide to be a caterer tomorrow. Yeah. Does right. your family like the food you cook? Do they give you real critiques? Have you cooked for your neighbors? Do people want to eat at your house? Are people asking you to then cook before you go buy a bunch of shit that you don't eat? Can I service my can I service my community here? on the far east side of Indianapolis before I decide to be like, okay, I need to take on the full east side of Indianapolis. I need to take on Indianapolis. I need to take on Marion County and, you know, surrounding Indiana. counties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indiana, like, yo, I, it's crawl before you walk. It's, mm -hmm. But it's not saying you're not mobile. Yeah, you still can move. That's what again, the skateboard will still get you. Uh, down. Yeah, that was, that's a, yeah. god damn, bro, that's a good analogy. Again, I didn't. I, to be fair, I didn't come up with this as a business principle, mm -hmm. right? Like I didn't come up with. It. I'm just, I just know when I learned it, it was like, oh, you got to That's how you. So I'm saying we didn't. We didn't build like that. Yeah. We we didn't say okay, let's not have twenty shows. Yeah. No knock on their shows. Let's have five good shows that when we get more revenue, we can put more money into those shows to help promote them, whether it's like on social media ads, let's let's hire somebody to help do uh, social, let's help somebody do social media, let's hire people to do this. We did a little bit of that. Like to be fair, it's not it, it we we have people who cut clips, but if but again, even going to the clip cutting, most of the clips are still related to you know the type of content we're talking about. The the because if I'm as an editor, I know I don't have enough. I would never have enough time to watch all 20 shows. So I don't even have time to cut everybody's clips. So I don't know. Again, we're not involved in that decision. So, but it, but it's still geared towards one, mainly like one or two entities. So what you end up with with some shows on the channel did go through the more skateboard, you know, the skateboard to car model. But most of the shows are like we, as far as not not the quality of the show, but as far as the engagement, are stuck on like one wheel two wheels aren't able to fully drive because it's not been built up because we think our our idea was if we just added more shows that would bring us more subscribers more revenue and then that would grow the channel and i'm just saying that's a flawed business model you know in and of itself yeah. so that's just what it is um so you what you end up with unfortunately and this is probably one of the hardest things to say on here is the channel kind of returns back to how it started. It kind of becomes, I mix what I like plus more than it's like BPM centered. It's more of, I, I mix what I like plus. And I don't, again, that's not a knock on Dr. Ball as an individual, but that's just, if we, you scroll through a channel, he's on most of the shows he's on, he's the, he's the face of the channel and it's okay to have a face of the channel. We're not advocating for, every show to get 2000 views yeah, or like some kind of general fake equality. It's okay. If some shows outperform others, because some people just like content other better than others. Um, but how do you distribute the amount of views? How do you distribute the power and the resources that come in? And that conversation that, that that's the, that's what we're getting at is the structures. How do you distribute those things? And we're not really having that right now. Like that's, that's not, you know, so that's our primary critique on channel management. Unless y'all have anything else. Um, <laughs> so it's like, I mean, that's on the money. I don't have, I don't have any other. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, remember on to say what? I said, remember 106 in Park? <laughs> yeah, I remember that show. A, a lot of people only recognize BET back in the day for 106 and Park, but there were other shows that were dope as hell on BET back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, you old enough even. Us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not advocating for us to try to bring back anything from BET. To, to mm -hmm. I mean, I would, but the, the problems with BET are very similar to and, this. Just add a very heavy layer of exploitation. Oh, man. <laughs> that is not existing here. Like B, like 106 in Park was very top heavy. That was the one show. And then anything after that is like, okay, cool. Yeah, and to be and to be fair, any business has a star, especially under capitalism, it has a star. It has a 
primary revenue center, whatever you, business language you want to use, you know. Um, too. Yeah, like there are always going to be, I mean, anything you watch, anything you watch, sports, it's marketed that way. There's going to be someone who most people are there to see, and then there's lesser known entities within it. And I think that would probably even be true in a different type of economy. I don't think it would be as, I don't think there would be as uneven and there would be as much inequality as there is under capitalism. I don't think it'd be close, but there's always going to be a version of it, uh, particularly under capitalism, where there's going to be those that outperform others. Socialism is never asking for a total flattening of things. It's just a question of how those resources get distributed. And when you have stars and you have people who get more attention, that often just re perpetuates itself and there's not much of a correction. Right. So we need we're just asking for a correction of that. That doesn't make that doesn't say, OK, kick Dr. Ball off and put C Cameron on every show. We're not that's not the that's not okay. the point. a lot of us don't even have the kind <laughs> no. of time we appreciate, do. we appreciate the fact Dr. Ball even gives us much time because <laughs> I, I don't even have time to be on the channel that much. So it's just in the knock on it. It's just the, with, again, we're dealing with structures and people have to be able to sit with these things and not always turn into shit, personal shit. Part of this is an immaturity of our own analysis that we always look at things as a versus someone else. And we don't look at the dynamics that le that push things forward that are much deeper than my personality or someone else. We have to grow out of that. Yeah, you know, that's just not Bro. that's just not what it is. <laughs> so last one is uh, channel economics. Here we go. Um, I said the last I said the one before this might have been dicey. This is. Anytime you talk about money, this can get, you know, it can get dicey. Um, so, you know, when no one here is getting rich on BPM, we're not going to tell y'all how much money comes in. That That's private information. We're not giving y'all that. So don't, you're not going to get that. We'll tell you how it works. We're not telling you a dime of how much comes in. If someone else wants to share that information, that's on them. We're not doing it. Um, we don't have regular jobs. Yeah. For but we will say no one in BPM is, is rich. Even the people that get the most money, nobody's getting rich. So we don't really think anyone's motivation is to be rich because doing something called black power media on YouTube is probably not the best way to get rich, you know? <laughs> so, so, we're, <laughs> so, so we're not accusing. That's, yeah. That's we're, yeah. Put all your eggs in this basket. Yes. Yeah, we're not accusing anybody of trying to like, you know, but with that being said, that, sometimes can become a shield to not interrogate what does happen like there's still my there's still money that comes in we still got membership we still got ads we still have views you know uh a thousand is a low view for our show and 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 several thousand is a low view for other shows and you know there are and there is a lot of money to be made on youtube if you know how to how to trick the algorithm like someone like fd who's really good at that um you know, I mean, I've been in videos with his, I think I haven't checked in a while, I believe it's at like a million views. So there's money to be made. And he did that talking about the kind of stuff we talk about, you know, uh, to some extent, at least. Um, so you have to interrogate the model. So how does our model work? Again, we're not going to tell you how much money comes in, but on the channel, the way it works, um, it's it's a three way split. It's three, um, one third goes to the owners of the revenue. Uh, one third goes to the show content creators that includes owners who create shows so they can get, get money from both. If I understand it correctly, that pop piece of the pie, as well as the owner pie. And then there is just one third of the money goes back into the channel to deal with expenses and stuff. So we're not, we can't, cause we can't take everything out. We got to pay bills. Even our show on a much lesser level, you know, we got to pay for zoom or, you know, um, it, what, however we upload our podcast or whatever, lips in or whatever. Um, so, you know, the channel claims we've said that we're an anti-capitalist, um, you know, network. And we're, you know, so I just want to make sure I'm, people are clear. We're not, again, I want everything to be on record that this is what people be saying, or this is what people say, you know? Uh, so there was a once upon a time, uh, Dr. CBS's show, Last Dope Intellectual, is no longer on Black Power Media. Um, but there was a time when it was, um, and there was, and all, other than Kamal, that she brought on what she 
jokingly referred to as the daishikis instead of the suits. Uh, <laughs> and, and, um, and I think Kamal wasn't, Kamal wasn't there. That's what she said. Like, you know, so. Daishikis instead of the yeah. suits. Oh, man, that's hilarious. That's on brand. That's funny. But so as she interviewed, because Kamal wasn't there, but it was doc, it was your doctor, Dr. Ball and Kalanji. And um, she asked about what our principles are, and this was Kalanji's response. I don't know exactly where it is. I'm just let it play. I gave that real quick. Like, how do we contend with some of the political differences that we might have? Like, how do we ensure that um, we're not tending to the right or to the center? I think Pretty often. That I, I would say that... Um, we don't have to be in, in, in the same book. I mean, excuse me, we're on the same page, but we definitely have to be in the same book. You know what I mean? Uh, the basics have to be the basics have to be covered. Number one, we must understand that we are an anti-capitalist front. We have to be clear about that. You know what I mean? So there's no compromising that. We are a pro-African front. You know what I mean? So we should be clear about that, hence the name Black Power. You know what I mean? Um, I, and also, I think that... Um, it's important that we allow ourselves room to grow within those particular parameters. Now, we, we won't, uh, I, I don't think that any of us uh, would say we have all the same politics. Uh, There's something Layla says here. Also, shout out to Dr. Layla Brown. Um, she says something here about modeling um, the things we say uh, that I think is important. I just want to make sure I get the right spot. But I also think it's important too, even when, you know, to your point, Kalanji, about being in the same book and not, not necessarily on the same page, that we model what it's like to have those types of disagreements in ways that work towards consensus, right? So like, rather than, rather than just saying, they do them over there, we do us over here, thinking about, and I, like, that's actually what I like about, I think, the morning show too, is because it's an opportunity for all of the various personalities to have some dialogue with each other. And I think that that's also important um, in terms of getting into the same book and maybe closer to the same page. Mm -hmm. All right. Layla basically made the point that we've been making the whole episode on that one. Um, so, yeah, that again, I don't know how much I'll keep on that, but that was us stating that we are an anti capitalist channel. Um, but I think sometimes we can throw out rhetoric, but honestly, the model just doesn't hold up to anti-capitalism or more specifically socialism, you know, which technically aren't the same thing, but they're close enough. Um, because just to kind of break it down with the pie itself, if the revenue grows, there's three people inside one third of the pie. The other third of the pie, there's at one point 20 different shows with multiple hosts. So, again, we're not giving out any numbers. Let's just say we brought in 100 grand for a year, right? That means that 33,000 or so was going to go to the owners. Whether they produce a bunch of shows or not, that's just the equity that they get as being owners. That's not anti capitalism. That's just what it is. So like that's so that's just the way it's built. It doesn't now there's a way again, what can we talk about Dr. Ball? He does more he does more labor on this channel as far as like as far as the outward labor of putting on putting stuff on the screen. Now there's you know, I think we put in a lot of labor behind the scenes as far as our preparation, but as far as just being on the screen that much, so it's we're not we're not taking away from that. But I'm just saying, like, that's not an anti capitalist model. It's just not, you know. And again, we agreed to that ourselves so we're not here to throw everybody in the bus that these niggas is corrupt because we agree to that but i'm just saying like that's not an anti-capitalist model you can kind of see how the stuff we're talking about with the structure and stuff it builds in an incentive because it's like if we put up if we went from two shows a month to four shows a month we do get a little bit more revenue from the ad side ourselves if we bring in more ads but the amount of money we're going to get from the which is the bulk of our revenue is our um patreon and our membership money we're still just going to get whatever split happens within that third of the pot so there's not really an incentive to us to even make more content because we're not really going to make much more money 
Because if the revenue goes up, we still keep the same piece of the pie. And then and when the, shows get a added, a piece of pie, because they also have a show. Yeah. And then when shows get added to our pie, we've experienced this directly. We can go from getting this amount to this amount, no matter how well we've done as a show, because that because we're already stuck in that piece of the pot. You know, yeah. that's just the end. It's just built into it. That's and that's the this is the only thing about the channel. I won't say the only thing. This is the most structured and formalized part about the channel is this economic model. You know, other than that, there's a that's lot of stuff is open. Say what? I said it's a very ineffective structure. And yeah. we're not even in it for the money. We've said it over and over. But when these things occur, like it can continue to bring about discontent co from multiple people, um, regardless. And there's no then drive towards a singular goal because whether you put out an episode a day, an episode a week, an episode a month, one episode a year, um, this still this model is still how things get divvied up and you can then imagine how other folks who are doing a hell of a lot of work would then feel um, in comparison. And, and thankfully, you know, we ain't had a ton of beef, um, not we as an individual, but I mean, we collectively, I think folks for the most part do their best to try to talk things out, but like long-term, that's what we want to avoid. Like, talking about these things and calling these things out aren't because there is drama always existing. It is also to mitigate the potential for drama down the exactly. line. Yeah. Because we believe in the work that we're trying to do and we want to ensure that it can have a long lasting impact on our people. And so I don't want folks listening um, to see this and be like, oh my God, there's all this beef and there's all this spicy tea behind the scenes and that's not even it. Some of the things that we're discussing are not things that actually currently uh, exist on a large scale. They might just be seeds, like Ter that Terrell said earlier, that we're trying to knit, that we're trying to pull the weeds before it actually has time to take over and become a larger issue um, that could cause us to implode. Yeah. Did and it goes, it goes back to the management question of like the model, the scale, Again, I don't think this was foreseen. I think at the time that this model probably made sense when it was started. But as you try to scale up, you see how this model can create a built-in inequality uh, mm -hmm. that just does it de de incentivizes people who are not, you know, owners to make the to make content. Um, you know, and then it creates an incentive, you know, for the owners if they want to make content, you know, that because it or to add to great raise the revenue because that's that's more money. Now I don't think to be fair, I don't think that's the motivation of of the the founders or owners. I'm not suggesting that. I don't I can't speak to what's in their heart, but I don't I don't believe that. Um but it's just built in. You know, it's just built into it and I, it just um and I, I will lastly say even the idea of owners um within a channel that that claims to be anti-capitalist. Um, yes, you need people who direct traffic. Yes, you need people who are, you know, have some kind of formal leadership. We're not, we're not asking for a chaotic kind of model here. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people have to be built in to get into uh, the equity in and of itself. You know, that could all just be based on the labor that people put in. You know, it doesn't really jive with that kind of model um of being anti-capitalist and definitely not socialist if you have owners who you know are getting that much of the pie whether they want to keep it or not to be to be fair without giving away too much information some of them give it back to the channel because they want to benefit the channel they don't even keep it you know what i mean so that's, that's what i'm saying this isn't about individuals it's just to say that the, the motto itself doesn't really set up the principles that we've actually said online that they are now again anti-capitalism isn't something that we have locked in as a principle it's something that we've heard people say on shows but it's not something we have locked in as a principle socialism isn't something we have locked in as a principle these are not things we explicitly say we are about even if we try to mimic that on our own individual shows these are not things that we have put in place it's just not what it is so we're just asking for that kind of like 
formalization and some kind of organization, even if people reject our suggestions, we're just asking that there'd be some put into place that can lead to a better model because this, you know, doesn't really hold up and it's just like owners. Yeah. And it's not just about, you know, making sure that the pie gets split right or that people get visibility. Those are, they're important, but we're bringing these things up and examples of how to make it better because the content of what folks, some folks, we need to, we need to skim and clip some of this and not for the sake of like folks are whack, but if we going back to, we need values that are aligned. If we then scale down on all of the content that we put out and then we collectively have an idea of then how do we want to organize this so that the masses get the best amount of information possible mm -hmm. to it. And mm -hmm. that in turn also will then mean that everyone who's putting in the work together are getting paid equitably, that we are pouring our resources, like y'all were just talking about, into a way where folks are getting visibility and not because folks need to go viral or anything, but because we need increased visibility to make sure the right information is getting out to the right people at the right time. Yeah. Even even basic ass influencers who are just selling you Fashion Nova outfits have entire media strategies mm. of how we know to post every day mm. at 12, 2, 5, and 7 because you're on your lunch break. You might be getting a snack break. You just got off work and now you're scrolling because you need to decompress from your day. You have unwind all of, you know, they understand how to navigate that space to get the best reach to people. And that in turn also gets them more visibility and more money on the long term. There has to be a structure of how we vet shows as to if they're going to be beneficial to the channel. Right. The I mean, channel. Even, with, even as a teacher, when we are covering topics and you have a test or over time, a standard, you know, that we are aiming to reach, we are evaluating folks as they go. And if we see that students are not doing well, they are not grasping the standard, then an intervention is put forth. Right. Yeah, and that doesn't, and that, that doesn't that mean. That might be a conversation. Exactly. That might be, yeah. Talk about your, like what, what's missing? How do we support? And then long-term, if that is not working, then we talk about a plan on what happens next and that same method can then be utilized when we talk about some of our shows if we see that something is not working then we have conversations what what's going on why is your viewership love is it the content is it promotion is it editing and then mm -hmm. and that is what the the premise of our desire and having this conversation that we've been having for an hour is like without structures in place that conversation could easily be like, yo, your shit's whack. It's not working. Yep. We're just going to clip you. Yep. And even if that's and not how the, the, the conversation goes, it could be constructive. But if there was no structure set in place on like how we go about these things, that's my, that might be what somebody hears. And and what you see on our channel in real time is just, you just, they don't, I don't, I don't, and I, this is without talking to people. They just don't post anymore. I don't know if they've been fired, kicked off. I don't know. You know, like just you just you ain't seen that shit in three months. You know what I mean? Like it's just like it's just kind of like when it comes to that like, third share of the pie, like yeah, let's take it away from our like effectiveness of producing our show. And sometimes it can be something as simple as that was a good concept. It's not aligned to what we want to do and the direction that we want to go but yeah. how about you tag team with somebody else because what you have to say and your skill set is valuable and you guys revamp x y and z and then we have we go from two separate shows that both might not have been doing well to one that can be effective if directed in x y z yeah you can you can yeah. you can consolidate yeah. but you but to do any so of these things, idea too. to do any of these things uh, there has to be a structure built to like Cam said, to actually work through that, we don't have that structure. So a lot of stuff essentially just falls to the wayside. It's not the mm -hmm. big drama beef thing. It's just a lot of things really just fall to the wayside. A lot of whether it's people's shows, whether it's certain principles, whether it's certain ideas, whatever you want. And we're coming back to that that whole analogy about scale and building up and the the car and the skateboard 
part of why that doesn't get done is because you overextend yourself when you're trying to build the perfect car and you don't have anywhere you can't put your resources into just going from a skateboard to you know scooter or whatever because you've already extended yourself so in the sense of the channel we don't have that's part of why they, the the operations manager would have been helpful even though i don't know if one person could really solve all these things um but it's like there's the resources to do these things are not being marshaled because we've overextended ourselves now we have all these shows we can't just go kick everybody off the channel we're not advocating for that but we've overextended ourselves we've we become top heavy, like all these things. These, these are things. That's why we're trying to bring this up now. Because if BPM goes from thirty six thousand subscribers to one hundred and fifty thousand subscribers, it probably, you know, and at this current rate and with all of the things happening, there's going to be even more problems because now you do have more revenue. But what's the structure that says where that revenue needs to go? What's the structure that says how we need to build up shows, or is it just about show, 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 right. show? Um, that yeah. or how even like that yeah. up is going like because if it's that top heavy it's gonna just do like uh like this is the top right here and then everything at the bottom is just yeah it collapse it becomes top heavy and it, and it and it sways and leans towards you know the people who already have the most advantages that is just how structures work like this is the scientific understanding of these things that's what i'm saying this is not even about personality now personalities matter the way people you know we'll see how personalities will really matter in how this is responded to you know yeah. that's where you'll really if you want to have a moral conversation you know again we have all these interests that we have to cipher, cipher through we have books we put out we have talks we want to post we have popular like we have all this stuff we got to figure out to cipher through that's just life the only the our, we're just proposing the best way to cipher through those things is with some kind of structure that's more formalized that's that's more democratic that's more open to people you know like that's what we're asking for <laughs>
if we had principles for unity anytime someone's ego got in the way then it'd be like yeah all that shit you talking not align with what we collectively have discussed and, and decided on and therefore if you was beefing at that wedding you need to be beefing at that wedding and don't bring that over here um because i think i've said it I, I don't even know how many times at this point probably five but we want to continue to be able to do good we want to continue to try to strive um for liberation we want to continue to see the largest impact not just as black women's podcast but as folks a part of the you know black power media and i think the work that so many other folks on our channel are doing is really really good and it's getting yeah. amen yeah yeah i just think that you know just put, putting these structures in place you know implementing at least are trying to you know implement a lot of these ideas is going to improve the overall quality of the channel yeah. um you know there is a growing black leftist voice on like youtube i mean you mentioned fd signifier there's fab socialism t noir khadija Imbo. now they might not do the same thing uh, as us necessarily but there is a thirst on hunger for alternative um like alternative media or alternative uh, views on politics that are that do have a black voice yeah. so and these are not like small channels these are pretty large channels yeah bigger so than there's ours. A, yeah. yeah bigger than ours and they you know so there's a hunger there and that's all we want to do we just want to make sure we push the channel forward make sure we we have structure in place to make sure we hold each other accountable accountable and then um just um live up to being that propaganda arm of the black liberation movement and that's it yeah yeah that's well said i think yeah, yeah. It, nothing we recommend is undoable um and there's probably more stuff again we invite other people to chime in you know but we I invite know. you we invite you to chime in on the premise of structure. Like that's our, that's our, but we don't invite you to just give random opinions about stuff. You know, we invite you to chime in on how can we create a system around here that is that, that better, that improves the things we do. We're, Cause we're not saying that BPM is trash and nothing works. No, nah, but this is a critique. So you're going to hear more of the negative things. Cause it's a critique. You know, we gave you the positives at the beginning, but but like, how do we improve it for what we are trying to do? And if and if that and if 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 nothing changes, if this is what it is, if this is how everybody want to go, if that's the vote, it is what it is. We said our piece. <laughs> you know, I invite, I invite the other shows on BPM to do the same thing that we did, and like do it wholeheartedly, not malicious. Like we're not we're not trying to you know come at nobody. And I think we all understand, like, this is a labor of love. Nobody's getting rich off of this. Trust me. We all have our regular day jobs. We all got to go do some shit after this to go make money to support our households. It is what it is on that front. But when it comes to this Black liberation movement and looking out for our people, I've always said that Black people are very critical of themselves and I think this is one moment where we really need to check ourselves and be critical of ourselves and really acknowledge what we're doing as an organization and how it's affecting members in the organization as well as those outside of the organization who view our content who support us with their dollars like we have people that you know i'd see it every day like i'm at work and i see people five dollars to the to the patreon or you know somebody commented on this youtube video we have real people out there that support us and i feel like we owe that to them to be at our very best and to critique ourselves to critique each other that was probably longer than it felt, but I feel like it breathed by quickly. But um, I felt like that was good. The time doesn't tell me that, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was pretty good. But I but now nah, I, I hope you know we're we're open. Also, lastly, we're open to 
coming on other shows, um, you know, to with the people we've discussed, obviously, to, you know, hash out what's <laughs> been brought up here. You know, we'll, I've, I have no problem coming on anybody's show if the, if the time is available to hash this out. And I have no problem talking to anybody offline because some of this stuff doesn't need to be aired out. That's why certain things, there's a lot we could have said, ain't airing it out. Um, you know, because we want to stay, you know, above table here. But, you know, so we're down to talk on or offline to figure it out. But this this BPM should be everybody's that that cares about it, you know, in some capacity. So other than that, you know, peace out. Um, you know, this may be the last time y'all see us. Okay. Fresh out the plane in a whole nother state. I'm trying to eat down a whole nother plate. Seem like my homies were stuck in the hood.